throughout that entire time, the Lord had a hand of grace over my life that meant that I had not one single uh, conviction, not one arrest or um, the only charges I ever had were driving offences, which this year, um, God, yeah, God sort of spoke to me at the end of last year, told me to quit the job, go to rehab and go full-time ministry. So um, the Lord spoke to me in prayer this morning was that he'd bring reconciliation into our nation. So there's God's purpose to find a church, a, a bride for his son, Christ, who is going to be uh, glorious, is going to be the, without spot and wrinkle, any such thing, meaning that the sort of bride that God is looking for and is, is attaining for Christ has to be suitable to him. Pushing into my faith uh, to about two years ago, um, but not, not, you know, just I was, I was getting there, I was giving it a go, but actually like giving my life to, to Jesus was the, uh, uh, was the big, big part for me. Uh, um, you know, Jesus, Jesus wants air platform. We can't bring him onto air platform, bro. Like, you know, Very he good, wants man. air platform and he will leave us. The Song of Solomon is such a great but there, you know, if you look at the fragrances that they have, he says, you know, you, you smell like this, and he says, you know, and she says, you smell like that. Their fragrances are very similar. And so what, what it tells us is this, that, is that the fragrance of the bride, the fragrance of the God's people, is similar to the fragrance of Jesus. And so this is why, this is why they're able to be uh, compatible. Wow. Wow. We are called towards to hear that. We're called to worship together, we're called to build one another up, we're called to pray with one another, we're called to prophesy over one another, we're called to encourage one another, we're called to resource one another in our ministries, however that looks, physically, um, emotionally, with encouragement, financially, whatever that looks like, we are called to be with one another. This guy, he goes, one of our mates had a sore back, and, um, and this guy goes, oh, let's go and pray for him. And there was that little bit of um, doubt, you know, that was just like, oh, yeah, but I was like, nah, you know what, well, you know, you know, I want to be encouraging. I love the way that's clean stepping out. So, yeah, jump into it, right here, let's go. We went into this bread mission first. We delivered bread all around Waitara here, um, like asking Jesus where he wanted us to go next. Like, oh, no, stop, this is the house. And so anyway, <laughs> we did that. And then we got um, to the Bro Luke's and he was in agony he couldn't actually even move like praying for him and um both i went in i both just got melting hot bro like melting hot and um and so i said to luke i said can you feel any heat or anything bro he goes yeah i thought you saw holding wheaties on me or something and i was so i we both had this revelation that jesus was fully present he was there and he was with us as we were praying and so we got I think quite pumped up about that. Um, when I sat on the rock, and then as soon as I sat on the rock, the rock I heard no stand, and so all right, so I stood, wow. did my prayer, and and just burst it out, and and it just all the words that had been going through my mind and and my prayer and what God was saying to me just flowed like amazingly. So ministry wise, you know, like I I wanna. Um, it's always been my heart to preach to hundreds, to preach to thousands of people and, and see them saved. But the other thing I learned is, you know, God wants us to concentrate on the one 